Can we say that I am a manager? Amen. This morning, the Lord just uh, laid upon my heart um, this offering message. Uh, and, and we were saying that tithing has nothing to do with giving God our money. God doesn't need anything from you. Amen? Amen. There is nothing that you can give God. Amen? Everything on the earth already belongs to God. Amen? So when God sets something up, it's not because He needs it. Amen? Amen. Tithing and offering is God's management program for humankind. God doesn't need a penny from us. Yet, He tells us 10% of everything belongs to Him. Amen? Amen? We only think about money. If we get 10 dresses, one of them doesn't belong to us. Amen? If we get 10 shoes, one of them doesn't belong to us. If we get 10 oranges, one of them doesn't belong to us. Amen? If we get 24 hours in a day, 2 hours and 40 minutes doesn't belong to us. Amen? Amen. We are thieves if we don't use that 2 hours and 40 minutes for God's purposes. Amen? Amen. Money isn't the problem. Management is the problem. God says, can you consistently put aside 10% for my purposes? God owns a hundred percent, so if we get a salary of a thousand rand, a hundred, one thousand rand belongs to God. Amen? Amen. God said, give ten percent, so what's left? Ninety percent. So how much belongs to God? A hundred percent. Amen? So why did he say ten percent? It's not about the money, but it's our ability to put it aside. Amen? It is the will, it is our control, it is our discipline that God is trying to teach us. Amen? If we can manage the 10%, He, he, he is happy to trust us with the 90%. Amen? But we, if we are unfaithful in the 10%, we find ourselves keep losing the 90%. Amen? Our salvation is in the tithe. Tithing is teaching us management. Number one, it teaches us accountability. Number two, it teaches us discipline, for we need to put the 10% aside. Amen? Amen? Number three, it teaches us honesty. There's no one but God watching. Amen? Amen. We can lie to everyone else, but not God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Number four, it teaches us diligence, for we need to constantly work at it. Amen? Amen? Number five, it teaches us faithfulness, for it takes faithfulness to tithe. Amen? Amen? And number six, it teaches us trustworthiness. God must be able to trust us with what He has given us. Amen? Amen. So all of these points describe a manager. And Jesus demonstrates His management skills. If we can go to the book of Mark, chapter 6. And we are reading from verse 40. So it says, So they sat down in groups of 50 or 100. See, here we see organization skills. Amen? Jesus took the five loaves and the two fish, this is the resources, looked up toward heaven and thanked God and blessed them. This is showing us appreciation. That means it doesn't belong to us. Amen? Then breaking the loaves into pieces, he kept giving the bread to the disciples so they could distribute it to the people. He showed us delegation here. Amen? Then they all ate as much as they wanted and afterward the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftover bread and fish. Amen. Amen. The leftovers he's speaking about not wasting. 
It's not about the leftovers that were important, but it's the lesson to not waste. Amen. If we can manage this building, surely He can give us our own. Amen. Amen. God is watching us. Can we handle our tithe? Can we set aside what is God's? Amen. Can we manage well what God has given us? Amen. 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 Let's bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you have given us, O oh God. Lord, we pray that you may help us to manage, O oh God, what you have given us. Help us to be faithful in what you've given us, so mighty God. Father God, may you stir in our hearts, so oh God, that we may be able to give, God, for your purposes, O oh Father God. Lord, today we just want to thank you, O oh God, that you gave first, O oh Lord. You gave your life for us, O oh mighty God. And today, O oh God, let us celebrate, O oh God, what you have given us, mighty God. We thank you, O oh Father God, just as you've given, O oh Father God. And you continuously give, O oh God. You continuously wash our sins, O oh Father God. Let us continuously give to you, give to your kingdom, O oh mighty God. Lord, we thank you, and today we say we appreciate your giving, O oh God. We appreciate you in our lives, O oh mighty God. Lord God, help us learn diligence, O oh Father God. Help us be faithful in what we have. Help us be faithful in our giving, O oh mighty God. Father God, help us, O oh God, to be trustworthy with what you've given us, O oh mighty God, that you may trust us with even more, O oh mighty God. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for this building, Almighty God, that you have given us, O oh Father God. We will be faithful with it, Almighty oh God. Lord God, we thank you, O oh God, for our music team, O oh God. We thank you for the people that you've given us, O oh Almighty God. Let us be faithful with them, Almighty oh God, that you may increase, O oh Almighty God. You may increase our doors, you may increase our bonds, O oh Almighty God. Lord God, may the people, O oh Father God, come into your house, O oh Almighty God. Lord God, we thank you, O oh Father God. We bless your holy name, O oh God. We celebrate you today, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.
calling of God and we have gathered in this place even so there are millions around the world Father God remembering that oh Lord God on the third day the tomb is empty Jesus Christ the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords risen from the dead oh God thank you this morning oh Lord God for salvation we thank you for the blood of Jesus Without the blood, Father God, we would be a people without life. We would be a people alienated from the life of God, alienated from the promises of God. But because of the blood of God, we who were once far off and strangers, O oh Lord, have been brought near. And have been made, O oh Lord God, meet partakers, O oh Lord God, of your divine nature in Christ Jesus. And we all partake, O oh Lord God, of your glorious inheritance in the saints, O oh Lord. So we just thank you this morning, O oh Lord. Thank you for Calvary. Thank you for salvation, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, O oh God, for buying us back, O oh God. Thank you for reconciling us back unto yourself, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. Lord of Thank you, Lord of God, for your wondrous plan of salvation. Thank you, Lord of God, for the name of Jesus. For there's no other name given among men by which we might be saved except by the name of Jesus. We thank you for the Lordship of Christ Jesus this morning. Thank you, Lord, oh God, and we are in this world, but we are not of this world. Thank you for seating us, oh God, in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord, oh God, for the power and the authority you've given to us, oh Lord, to use the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, oh God, that we can, Lord God, lay claim on every promise that you have made unto us by virtue of the blood which was shed for us, O oh God. Father, we thank you this morning for your presence here, for your word says that we're two or more gathered in your name. There you are in the midst of them. Thank you this morning, O oh Lord God, that you'll meet each and every individual at the point of need, Father God. Father, this morning we worship you. We've come into this place to worship you, to honor you, Lord God. Not because of what we can receive from you, O God, but we worship you, O God, because of who you are to us, O God. You are the life giver, O God. You are, Lord God, our creator. You are our Abba Father, the one who loved us so much, O Lord, that you are willing to pay a price, O God, a, a dear price, O God. My Lord God, sacrificing your very only Son for us. So we just thank you that by that one sacrifice, you have perfected forevermore those, O Lord, who come to you in faith, O God. So we thank you this morning that we are products of faith. Thank you for the grace of God which has been revealed to us in Christ Jesus. Almighty God, I pray this morning that you will bless and anoint my vocal cords to declare, O oh God, your word to your people. So we thank you this morning, O oh Lord, for the awesome privilege and honor to once again hear your precious word. For, O oh Lord God, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Thank you this morning that understanding will come, enlightenment will come, encouragement will come, in the name of Jesus, hope will arise in the hearts of men and women. Faith will be imparted into every life, Father God, both young and old. We thank you this morning in Jesus' wonderful name. And all the people of God say, Amen, Amen, Amen.
because we're going to make a noise right now. Amen. We're actually going to do it at the end of the service, but we can do it right now. If you didn't bring anything, don't feel bad. Praise God, you have two hands. Use them. Clap. Praise God, you have a voice. You have breath. You can use it. Praise God, there are some of you who are gifted. Like Sister Eve there. Praise and worship Jesus that we see up front. I was surprised how many of the female musicians that we see up front.
forget about your neighbor. Your neighbor cannot know you. Maybe you should look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, please do not even look at me. Maybe I know we are spaced out, you know, quite nicely, but you can even say, neighbor, just give me some space. <laughs> Thank you. 
same Jesus who ascended. Just look at this. At his resurrection, when he ascended to the Father to go and present his blood on the mercy seat in heaven. Can you picture this? When Jesus walked into that throne room, when he walked into that holy place, listen, as the high priest, the great high priest, he remains a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek, King of Salem. When Jesus, the fulfillment of scripture unfolding, as he walked in, imagine the noise in heaven. I mean, we've seen, you know, when the prince, when king makes a grand return back, and they make that entrance. Imagine just at the first step he went. What noise, what joy was there in heaven? It's like, you know, Joshua was last week, he was here, he says, Dad, if we can't make a noise now for God, if we can't worship God now, if we can't praise God now, how can we ever expect to do it? That's what's taking place in heaven. And I just, you know, whilst the noise is going on, I was just picturing this Jesus coming back. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished.
finish the message that I started on Friday along the lines of you are empowered by the blood of Jesus. And four things I said that we should know in particular about the blood is that number one, we should know what it stands for. Secondly, we should appreciate it. Thirdly, we should take advantage of the power that it carries. And lastly, we should be enjoying the unlimited blessings that the blood of Jesus carries for all mankind. You must remember that the blood of Jesus is extremely powerful. It's extremely powerful. That blood that was shed for us to ensure our deliverance and our redemption is extremely powerful. And it is life-changing. Amen. I share with you how the blood of Jesus gives us authority on the earth and it secures our future with him in heaven. And the other thing that I shared with you was that the blood that Jesus shed, the offering that he made, that one offering, that one sacrifice, it was necessary for all our needs, both now and for all eternity. So because of his blood, all our needs have been met in full. Nothing left out. Amen. Then I share with you that the enemy, the devil, is defeated by the blood of Jesus. It's the blood of Jesus that gives us the victory over the enemy. Amen. Praise God. And another thing that I share with you that's important is that it's important for us to know about the blood of Jesus, to know what it means, what it signifies, what it means to us. So that once we know it, once we understand it, and once we apply what the Bible says, what God says in His Word concerning the blood of Jesus, once we know that, we will be free from all sin, fear, deception, sickness, and everything that the enemy ever try to use against us. Amen. Because without knowledge of what the blood actually means, many of God's people today are actually held back and are destroyed. But thank God for the teaching of His Word. Amen. And I began sharing with you on some things that you all we ought to know in order to experience the power of the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen. I, shared, I think I ended off where I mentioned the third point, appropriating the blood of Jesus and taking possession of the power that's available unto us in the blood. And I used an example of Rahab. Another example of the woman with the issue of blood. You remember that. Speaking of covenant. And then I, I ended off by saying we should be expected. That woman with the issue of blood, she was expected. She expected him. Rahab was expected. She expected to be delivered. She expected to be saved. Because everybody in the city, when you read the Bible, she spoke to the spies. She says, everybody had heard about them. The fear and the dread of Israel had befallen everybody in the city. And because the spies made a promise to her, rather they made a vow, they said, you let out that scarlet thread signifying covenant, how the walls around the city were all, they all collapsed. The foundations gave way, except the house of Rahab. So Rahab experienced a miracle, so much so that she was considered, she would have been considered, obviously, in Israel, as one who is an outsider, an outcast, if you like. But 
we find in Matthew's Gospel when we read the genealogy of Jesus, our Messiah, we find that Rahab is mentioned. So because of the blood, the blood gives you an identity. The blood speaks of a price being paid in full. It speaks about remission. Amen. About being bought. You've been bought by whom? Bought by God Himself. And I mentioned to you that because of the blood of Jesus, we have every right to expect God to confirm His word in our lives. And I mentioned to you that every word that God has given us in His word, it's a blood word. It's written in blood. In the tablets of our hearts. That's why it's important that you guard your heart with all diligence. Allow the Holy Spirit to inscribe the Word of God on the tablets of your heart. I even used an example. I mentioned how when blood is shed, if you speak to these forensic detectives, they would tell you that people could use, you, they could try to use anything to try and clear up their blood. But there's always, they will always find a trace of that blood, even if it's 20, 30, 40 years later, they still find it because of those scanners that they have. And they use those, those, uh, those scanners. They're still able to detect the blood. That's why I said to you, it doesn't matter who says what or what the enemy tries to bring up against you. The word of God written in your heart, written in your life, Written in blood. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's why you see when Jesus says, heaven and earth will pass away, but not one tittle of my word shall by any means fall away. That means the promise that God has given, the promise God has given us, it's a forever promise. It's an eternal promise. And there's nothing the enemy can do to stop that. Now, we must understand, I mentioned to you that we are in a spiritual warfare, you remember that. And when you look in the book of Ephesians, um, the book of Ephesians chapter 6, the Bible tells us that the battle that we fight, it's against principalities and powers in heavenly places. That's the battle that we fight. Remember, the Bible tells us we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. Now, I want to go with you to the book of Revelation, chapter number 12. You can go there with me. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And I mentioned something on Friday, and I said you'd see it when I get to this particular verse. I mentioned that the blood of Jesus gives us access into the presence of God. And something else I mentioned very importantly is that because of the blood of Jesus, Satan and his cohorts lost their place in heaven. Do you remember that? I took you, or rather I mentioned about the book of Job. When you read the beginning of Job, Job, the book of Job tells us how the sons of God would come before God, and would come and appear before God. And you find that prior to the blood, the devil was able to accuse us before God. You could enter the courts of God, courts of God, courtroom. And he could accuse and he could accuse the brethren. Ah, but this, look at this, look at that. And every time he was accusing people, God knew that he had a master plan in place. 
which the enemy did not know about. So he would always accuse the brethren. Remember the Bible says he's the accuser of the brethren. Amen. And I said he lost his place in heaven because of the blood. Hence, you find that we too have a responsibility. We have a responsibility on our side to enforce the power of the blood so that we can overcome him too by the blood. He was cast out of heaven by virtue of the blood. And you, we cast him out by virtue of the blood. The blood gives us that authority. Because not just anybody can use the name of Jesus. Because the sons of Stephen tried it. What happened? The demon came out and entered them. But when your blood washed, washed in the blood of the Lamb of God, washed in His precious blood, you have that authority and you have that entitlement, that right to use His name. Revelation chapter 12, and I'm picking up from verse number 7. And war broke out in heaven. You see that? War broke out where? In heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. Michael and his angels fought with who? With the dragon. Hallelujah. And the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail. Nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. Amen. You see that? Nor was there found a place for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out. The serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the world. He was he was cast where? Where? What does your Bible say? Where was he cast to? He was cast to the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. Hallelujah. So he was cast out to the earth. And, and his angels. They were cast out. You, you remember I've spoken to you about what it means to cast. To cast means to throw with a force. So they were thrown with a force out of heaven. Hallelujah. Then I heard a loud voice saying where? In heaven. Now salvation and strength. Now salvation and strength. And the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser, you see that? The accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. I mentioned to you we are in a spiritual battle, we're in a spiritual warfare, on a daily basis, we're in a spiritual warfare. We are, we are at war. Amen. Amen. And the enemy will always, always, he'll always try to bring accusation to you. He'll try to dig up your past. Remember, you do not have a past in Christ. Come on, somebody. Because the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. All things have become new. So if it's new, it means there's no past. So the enemy will always try to bring up your past. You try to bring up, you know, when you start feeling like symptoms and you say, oh, but our family, we've always suffered with this thing. Understand this. You are no longer in a generational curse because the blood of Jesus has delivered you. The blood of Jesus has translated you. Come and talk to me. Taken you out of the curse and brought you into the blessing. Now you abide in what is called the generational blessing. Come and talk to me, 
somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. The generational place. You listen, you remember King Hezekiah. You remember Hezekiah. How many of you remember Hezekiah? He was on his deathbed. And God sent the prophet to come and tell you, Hezekiah, your days are now. Get ready. Prepare for your burial. What happened? Hezekiah repented. Hezekiah turned to God. He turned his back to his past. Because it was God who could change the past, could remove the past and give him a future and give him a life again. And when Hezekiah did that and he faced the wall and he cried out unto the Lord, God then restored Hezekiah's life. He didn't die when he was supposed to die. So Hezekiah turned his back to the curse and he faced the blessing. And the blessing was that the years of Hezekiah were added. There were years added to his life. And when you go and study the life of the son of Hezekiah, Hezekiah's son reigned longer because of the generational blessing. Are you getting what I'm saying here, somebody? Hallelujah. So the enemy will always try to dig up your past. You'll try to dig up their bones. But take note, them bones, them bones, them dry bones. Hallelujah. They are buried. They are in the tomb. They are in the grave. They come and talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. The old you has died. It is Christ now who lives. So the enemy will always try to bring up accusations. You know, for you to, for you to downgrade yourself, for you to devalue yourself, for you to undermine yourself, undermine. When you mine, if you mine, you mine what underground. So the the enemy always wants to see you down. But understand, according to the word of God, the blood of Jesus has caused you to be seated in heavenly places, far above. Understand? So every time the enemy will come, he'll tell you, okay, sickness. Don't take that report. Don't take that report. Come on, somebody. Because the Bible says that by his stripes we were healed. I have a blood bought right to my healing. Are you with me? Hallelujah. So the enemy, he used to accuse in heaven. And he hasn't changed. He still uses the same, same schemes. People tell you another devil, another devil. Don't come talk nonsense to me. It's the same devil. It's true. It's the same devil. He hasn't changed. Come on, you can't tell me there's always another devil. It's the same old devil. The same old serpent. The same, come on, talk to me. The same accuser. He's the same. Hallelujah. So if accused in heaven, and the Bible tells us here that he was cast out out of heaven, he was thrown forcefully out of heaven. What did Jesus say? In my name, they will cast out demons and devils. You see, in his name, because the power in his name is connected to the blood. You must understand the gospel that we have received this gospel is a gospel of power. Yes. And the power, come on, talk to me. The heartbeat of the gospel, the heartbeat, at the heartbeat of the gospel is the blood. The blood. What does the heart do? What does it pump? Blood. You cannot take the blood out of the gospel. Then it's not the gospel. Hallelujah. So the blood of Jesus gives us that right to trample over all the power of the enemy. Amen? Amen? So if he was cast out from heaven by virtue of the blood, we too have a responsibility to do the same here. Yeah, talk to me somebody. Amen. Now it goes on to say in verse 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, Amen. and they did not love their lives to the dead. Therefore, 
Rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Wow. Where do you dwell? Where do you dwell? Am I in the right place this morning? Where do you dwell? Don't tell me your address where you stay in your home. Where do you dwell? You dwell in heaven. We are seated in heavenly places. Come on. We should sing that song. To be seated in heavenly places. Do you understand? You are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And the Bible says here, it says, Rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. You rejoice. Then it goes on to say, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath, having great anger. Remember, when he saw Jesus being crucified, and he, when he saw Jesus cry out, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, when Jesus cried out and he said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The devil thought he had the upper hand. He thought, now I've got, I got him just where I want him. Just where I want him. Because he's separated from the Father now. He's separated from God now. He's nothing without God now. I'm about to finish him off. And when Jesus says, it is finished, the devil thought, wow, now it's time for a celebration. And just when he thought he's about to celebrate, there was an earthquake. There was darkness on the face of the land. No, on the face of the earth, there was darkness. And then there was an earthquake. And then the grave started open. Come on, go. And then the temple veil tore in two. Because now there was a new veil, no longer the old veil. It was the veil of his body on the cross of Calvary. Then Jesus descended to the dead. Hallelujah! And then we thought that he had won, but hey, lo and behold, he lost, he lost. Now we see now he's been cast out, so he has great wrath because. He sees God had a better plan. Because when he saw that prostitute, when he saw that drug addict, when he saw that alcoholic, when he saw that adulterer, when he saw that thief, and he would bring the case before God, he thought, okay, yes, it's finished with them. But lo and behold, Jesus, Jesus, when Jesus died, he went down to the pit of hell. When he went in, the gospel was taken to those that were held in their poverty so that they could be loosed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus rose. When he rose, now, now you found the devil is on the earth. Roaming like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Yes. Hallelujah. But once, you see, he'll only devour those who will be destroyed by virtue of what they do not know about the blood. But once you know what the blood has done for you, once you understand the power of the blood, the devil cannot beat you. Talk to me, somebody. Yes. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the dragon is Satan and he is our enemy. Hallelujah. And his job, according to John 10:10, 10, 10, is to steal, kill, and destroy. But Christ, the Messiah, he came to give us life and life in abundance. One thing I want you to note from what I've just shared with you in Revelation chapter number 12 is that we are not alone in this fight. You are not alone in this fight. Talk to me, somebody. You are not alone in this fight. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I'm not alone. Say, neighbor, you're not alone. Say, neighbor, we are not alone. We are not alone. We are not alone. We are not alone. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are not alone in this fight. Hallelujah. It's a good fight. It's the fight of faith. Paul understood what he was talking about when he said, I kept the faith. I fought a good fight. Hallelujah. I fought a good fight. Why? Because I did not fight alone. I had God fighting with me. I had God fighting for me. Praise God. When you go to 2 Kings chapter number 6 and you read verses 16 to 17, you'll find that the king of Syria had sent forth his army to come and kill the man of God. But the man of God was not worried, but his servant was worried. 
And the man of God prayed unto God. And he says, oh my God, if you can only open, just open the eyes of my servant that he will see. God opened the eyes of the servant and when the, when the servant's eyes were open, lo and behold, he looked upon the mountains and he saw, he saw the chariots of God. Hallelujah. You must understand, oh, they that be with us are more than they will be with them. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Because of the blood, because of the blood, you have a dwelling in heaven. You have a place in heaven. Come and talk to me. Heaven is about. You have a place in heaven. Therefore, even when you pray, brothers and sisters, you are not praying from the earth to heaven for something to happen. When you are praying, understand, as a believer, when you are standing in covenant, in this covenant because of the blood, you are praying from heaven, commanding earth to come in alignment. You see, when you pray, you are praying the word of God. And you are praying, you are praying from a position of authority. You are praying from heaven, commanding earth to come in alignment with the word. Understand that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why I say, we are not alone in this fight. God hasn't left you alone. Amen. When you read the book of Psalms, chapter number 91, verses 11 through to 12, the Bible tells us he has given his angels charge over you. He's given his angels charge over you. He goes on to say they shall bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You understand? Just about when, when, when you're just about to hurt yourself, the angels of God come in at it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You are not alone in this battle. Michael and his angels won the war in heaven and we benefit from this in multiple ways. There are three things that happen as a result of Satan and his angels losing their war in heaven. Number one, he could not prevail. Remember the Bible says he could not prevail. What did Jesus say? I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. The church, where was the church birthed? Where was the church birthed? The church was birthed at the cross. Because, remember to fulfill scripture, to make sure that those that were on the cross were dead, they went and they broke the bones. They broke the bones of the thieves who were buried with Jesus. But remember, one went to paradise. That's why it's never too late with God. It's never too late. It's never too late with God. One went to paradise. Because he said to Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus said to him, truly, truly, I say to you, this day, not tomorrow, not next week, not next month, not next year, but this day, you'll be with me in paradise. This day, you will be with me in paradise. The, the, you see, that guy, I did on the cross, on the cross, he was a thief. But on the cross, he identified with the blood that was shed. You understand? Because he said, come on, talk to me, somebody. You know, when we look at, you know, a depiction of Jesus on the cross, that is still dignified. When you read the scriptures, the scripture says, he had no form. You couldn't even look at him. That's how bad it was. The depiction still, you know, put a napkin around him. He was naked. Naked, identifying with the, with the curse of poverty. Thirsty, identifying with hunger, with lack. By his stripes, he that thief, when he looked, he saw the blood from, from Jesus. Then the soldiers came and broke their bones. When they came to Jesus, they did not break the bones. They did not break the bones because scripture says not one of his bones shall be broken. Remember, he is the word of God. You cannot break the word. 
cannot break the word, he is the word. So what they did, that soldier took a spear, he thrust it through his side, and when he did that, water and blood, water and blood gushed out. And that is not normal. It's not normal because the soldier knew what he was talking about because when he done that, he saw the water, he saw the blood. He said to himself, this is the Son of God. Because there was a fountain of salvation flowing from his side. When a baby is born, there's blood and there's water. That was the birthing forth of the church. Hallelujah. That's why you say, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, talk to me You are one with him. So three things happened. Satan could not prevail because of the blood and the word of their testimony. Michael and them told him, you are defeated. The blood defeated you. And if they did it, you and I need to do it too. He could not prevail. The second thing that happened is the dragon and his angels were cast out. Therefore, when demons come up against us, we must cast them out. Come on, talk to me, somebody. We're not a weak church. When I say church, I'm not talking about this ministry. I'm talking about the body of believers in Christ Jesus. We are not weak links. You find, you know, come and talk to me, somebody. Deception has entered the church and now you find that the church is running from the devil. No, enough with the running. You stop where you are. You turn around. Come and talk to me, somebody. And you trample him underfoot. Because you're the head and not the tail. Hallelujah. It was foretold in Genesis. Your seed shall crush his head in the hill. Jesus says you will tremble on serpents and scorpions. You understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. So you don't run from them. You cast them out. You cast them out. Come and talk to me, somebody. You cast them out. Amen. Amen. Their place is no longer available. They lost their seats in heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. And in the very same way, brothers and sisters in Christ, the blood of Jesus removes them from their place in our lives. the power of the blood. There's three things that brought victory to Michael and his angels. Number one, they overcame by Jesus' blood. We overcome in exactly the same way. By the blood of Jesus. Second, they overcame by the word of their testimony. We too, brothers and sisters in Christ, must also testify and do it boldly. Do it boldly. Hallelujah. And lastly, they overcame because they were totally sold out to God. And this for us it means that we do not have to Fear for our lives because he holds our lives in the palm of his hand. You understand? No sickness, no disease, no plague shall come by my dwelling place. When you go and you read in the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter number 12, you find when God speaks to Moses, 
he says to Moses, this month shall be the beginning of months for you. This shall be the first month of the year for you. In other words, God telling Moses, Moses, this is a new year. You're stepping into a new year. You're stepping into a new season. And then God instructed him to go and instruct the nation of Israel to go and choose heads, representatives from each household and have them slaughter. Have them slaughter. A lamb. A lamb without spot, without blemish. That was the instruction. They shall boil it. They shall eat the meat in haste, but then the blood, the blood should be applied on the doorpost and the lintel. The doorpost and the lintel. Are you seeing this? The doorpost and the lintel. The doorpost and the lintel.
to accomplish. I am a missionary on a mission. I'm on a mission of faith.
because of Jesus, Lord, you've given us a life without limits. You've given us a life that is full of possibilities. Because all things are possible with you. Thank you, God, what is not possible with man. Because man will fail. It is all possible with you. So we thank you that you are the God of all possibility. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your body which was given for us. The body of Christ. Amen.
and then just went to 59 seconds. The very second after those seconds returns to 60. You get 2400 hours in the new year. Not yet. How many of you can identify with this? That it's like everybody has gone crazy. I mean, you open the door, it's like you're in China. You can smell the aroma of the fragrance.